There's a war going on, but you're not going to find it in the news. And I'm talking about the war between sales and marketing. Honestly, this war is being fought for a long time. And it comes down to a couple of things that make this war happen. One, you've got two different types of people. You've got a salesperson and you've got a marketer. On the marketing side, you've got highly analytical folks. You've got data oriented people and you've got project focused people who are literally working on projects every single day of the week. Now on the sales side, you've got hyper relational people, talkative people, because you know salespeople talk a lot, and you've got a sporadic, sometimes sporadic kind of stereotype, right? Now, if we kind of get into AKAs, you're looking at marketing being a little judgy, okay? That's a judgy person over here, and what salespeople have always been called is a bit pushy, okay? Now, if you've got a pushy and a judgy person, you've got conflict already. And I'll tell you right now, the way that this gap has existed is because traditionally sales and marketing, outside of being judgy and pushy, have just traditionally undervalued one another. That is really what has caused this. It's basically like, you can't close and your leads stink. That has traditionally been the argument between these two camps. And it doesn't really matter about whether they're different or not because salespeople, the best ones I've ever actually coached and trained, are somewhat introverted. They don't talk a lot. So this whole stereotype here is really not necessary. Now, over here, I'll tell you that marketers on the highly analytical side, totally, but I know marketers that are 100% interested in revenue. So what we need to start doing is talking about what we actually share and what has this whole war been really about. The real war is about the gap and that gap means that these two people, these two people, sales and a marketer need to get on the same page. So check this out. This is a traditional marketing funnel, okay? And you go from basically a prospect or a visitor to a lead, to a marketing qualified lead, to a sales qualified lead, to an opportunity, to finally spinning out the bottom, you get a customer. Now, traditionally, top, middle, and bottom, the marketing team has always owned the prospect, the lead, and the marketing qualified lead. And then the salespeople pick up a sales qualified lead, an opportunity, and a customer. Okay? So you've always got these two people kind of just owning these two things. Well, if you don't have any overlap, if you don't own anything together, you will inevitably have conflict. Okay? So what I want to show you here is that what I've found is that when sales and marketing own the middle, they actually end up resolving the conflict and seeing massive growth in their business. So in order for us to close the gap, We've done a few things at Digital Marketer that I love. One is we erase this arrow. That's the first thing we're gonna do, right? Because what we need to write here is ways in which we can close the gap. Now the first one and the one that's actually obvious. Now most things that are really smart are super easy, but they're not simple. I hope that makes sense. Let me put it this way. Proximity. Proximity is easy but it's very, very difficult in an organization. Proximity means that you need to get your sales and marketing teams sitting near one another if you can. Now, sometimes that's hard because on a traditional sales floor, you're getting terrible rap and house music, Red Bull, right? You're gonna get the gong when you, when you close a deal, and sometimes that's hard. Now, on the marketing side, you get a lot of headphones, a lot of jazz music, okay? You get a lot more of the zen feel over there. So sometimes you also have to kind of demystify, tear down those walls and see if marketers actually have the opportunity to interact with sales and sales interact with marketers. So here's what we've done at Digital Marketer. Digital Marketer, we didn't put them together because I actually do think that the sales floor is a little bit rowdy, if I'm honest, okay? But if you create a space like we do, we create open chairs and open desks and an open invite on the sales side to make sure marketers can come over and sit and also our general manager and our director of marketing come over often just to listen to phone calls and hear what's going on live on the floor. So the proximity part is really big. And sometimes salespeople are welcome on the marketing side, okay? Just kidding, they're welcome all the time, but they are a little noisy. So if they do come over, they need to make sure they take their shoes off and they are respectful of the Zen culture that we've built. Now, also outside of proximity, it's going to be a common goal. Common goals are huge. If you wanna get two teams on the same page, you have a common goal that they can achieve together. And when they do achieve it, you actually celebrate your wins together. At Digital Market, we have one huge and massive and probably my favorite core value, which is celebrate the wins. Now, when sales hits their numbers for the month, 
and you go into Slack and you see people that are putting in terrible gifts and celebratory comments, they're actually saying congratulations on sales and marketing for hitting your goals. And I'm actually really intentional as a leader in our company to make sure that I group those two together. So common goals gets it done. Also outside of proximity and common goals, the next thing that we want to start thinking about is numbers. Now this comes from top down, all right? Now, if you're a sales leader or a marketing leader and you aren't currently looking at the same numbers, then you're, you're creating disconnect between your teams, which perpetuates the war and you don't really even know you're doing it. When it comes down to the numbers, making sure that you know them, that your teams know them and understanding that the numbers are something that they have to achieve together is going to be a major way that you actually get rid of this conflict. And the number one thing, the number one way to end the war between sales and marketing is actually revenue. So when you get your sales and marketing team focused on revenue, you have a new team, a new team is formed. So you no longer have sales and marketing team. What you actually have is a revenue team. A revenue team is what actually bridges the gap between sales and marketing. It's what ends the war. But if you have a revenue team, it actually equals revenue growth for your company. And that is the ultimate goal for ending the war. Ending the war isn't just to make people happy, right? It's not just about cohabitation. Ending the war is finding two teams that become one team, the revenue team, that work together to help grow the business to accomplish the mission. So yes, maybe we're a little different. Maybe a little bit. Maybe we're a little pushy. Maybe we're a little bit judgy, right? But at the end of the day, when it comes down to how you want to grow your business, you get these two teams on the same page and you make sure that they're focused on revenue growth.